around the year of 1904, um, after J.J. Thompson, Thompson discovered the electron, he proposed this, um, this plum pudding model of the the atom and he thought that um, an atom would be like a, a Christmas pudding which is like a piece of uh, piece of cake with um, raisins inside many raisins inside and those raisins would be like the electrons and the, the cake around it would be like would be like um, uh, positive charges, positive charges. So he thought of the electrons um, as tiny particles that are stuck inside a lump, a, a big mass of um, positively charged material. So that's J.J. Thompson's idea of uh, uh, an atom. Right, remember that at that time people have absolutely no idea about um, protons, neutrons, nucleus, and, and the picture that, that we, we know today. So they are they're just guessing and, and they have just at that time just discovered the electron. Now a few years Later, a few years later, around um, around nineteen o eight, nineteen o eight, Rutherford, Ernest Rutherford. Did an experiment which shows that the atom actually looks quite different. Now, when J.J. Thomson first uh, proposed this model, this uh, idea or picture of an atom, this, this wasn't the only idea. Um, as with a lot of uh, ideas in science, whenever people are not sure. Uh, different people would come up with different ideas of how to explain how to explain uh, things and and what things might look like. So there was there was another person around around this time from Japan. Another person from Japan. His name was um, was Nagaoka. Naga Oka. Yes. Han Taro Naga Oka. I think he, uh, I should mention him because he thought that, he thought that it is not possible, it is not possible to have to have ne negative charges stuck inside a positive charge. Not too sure why he thought it's not possible. I've not read his uh, writings, but uh, that's what it says on Wiki. Okay, so uh, so let's just suppose that that's the case. And but his idea is is uh, very helpful. His idea is actually interesting and helpful right what he suggested was that in an atom it should really be positive charges all concentrated at the center that's his model and and that's electrons electrons are these particles that 
that would go that would go round and around this positively charged center so very much like very much like the planet Saturn if you have seen a picture of the planet Saturn which has rings going around it so Nagaoka's model as I suppose at that time became known as the Saturn's ring model of the atom whereas whereas um, Thomson's one was known as the plum pudding model there are actually other models uh, maybe I'll, I'll just mention one more there is another model uh, which thinks that the electrons are sort of inside a cube where uh, they are all where the electrons are, are just fixed at the corners of a cube inside the atom. All right, so that's actually there, there was actually another model, and there might well be others. Okay, so so it, it was at a time that people try to understand about atoms, and there are lots of different ideas. But whatever the ideas are, um, in science, it is important to to check whether they're correct to do experiments and, and make observations. And in 1908, Ernest Rutherford did an experiment which demonstrated quite conclusively that um, that Nagaoka's model where the positive charges are positive charges are concentrated at the center is uh, is uh, uh, likely to be the correct model. All right. So let's have a look at what Rutherford did. Now, at that time, at that time, people already knew about radioactivity. They already knew about alpha and beta and gamma particles. Okay, alpha, beta, gamma particles, and there are radioactive sources, radioactive sources like uh, say radium, for example, maybe a lump of radium that can that, that can emit these alpha particles. Now, the year was 1908. Not entirely sure whether Marie Curie has actually isolated radium already in that year. Um, but uh, I shan't go into the historical details, so I'll just take radium as an, exa an example of a material that can emit alpha particles. Might or might not be what Ernest Rutherford actually used. So, but it was known that it was known that these particles are extremely penetrating. It can go through, uh, it can uh, go through materials, and and um, it, they seem to have probably very high energies. Okay, but it probably it wasn't known. It wasn't known at that time what's inside the alpha particles. I mean, today we know that it is made up of two protons and two neutrons okay two protons and two neutrons but at that, at that time this wasn't known they didn't know that yet okay so but so Ernest Rutherford simply took these alpha particles and made, made use of the properties that it's very penetrating the particles are traveling at very high speed and did an experiment with um, with two other people uh, to study uh, to, to determine what the atom, what the inside of an atom actually looks like. And 
He did his work with, uh, let's see, with two other people in about, um, eight. So in 1908, what Rutherford did was, um, okay, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll describe what Rutherford did in 1908 first. He had a piece of, um, what Rutherford did at that time, was that he has this uh, radioactive source that gives out alpha particles? Okay, he has this, and then he um, he put a tube of a cylinder of just air, you know, just just air um, next to it, and he used uh, an instrument, an instrument. What we call today a, a, a Geiger Mueller counter. You know, if, if you have you might have watched movies uh, where people use an instrument to measure radioactive particles and, and when they find something radioactive, that device goes click 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 and make, makes lots of clicking sound. That's a Geiger Miller counter. So he he put uh, this counter next to or on the other side of the tube of air to measure um, the particles coming out from from this radio radioactive source. So there are these um, alpha, alpha particles coming out. So this is a radio active material or source. But what he found what he found was that the measurements um, detect the, the particles detected by the Geiger Miller counter seems to be very uh, seems to keep changing. Seems to be very random. Okay it, it, for example, it doesn't just produce a regular clicking sound. It might click more sometimes, less sometimes, and, and if it moves moves this up and down, um, the pattern keeps changing. It's, it's not like uh, as you move move it up and down, he sees some gradual change. Okay, so the 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 readings keep jumping around and and it keeps changing. So it was very difficult to understand because if these are so penetrating and this is just air, you know, it's, it's like there's nothing in there, just some molecules very far apart. And that's the kind of idea that people know at that time. So, and they might, they, it was also uh, quite, um, a lot of people also thought that uh, probably Thompson was right and, and at them really do look like a plum pudding. So that if, if uh, let's say, the alpha particles go through the, the the atoms in the air. It would just like you know a bullet going through a piece of cake. Right, the the the, the alpha particle would probably just go right through the atoms if if it hits an atom. So if it just keeps, if they are so penetrating and so uh, powerful, uh, the the radio the alpha particles should just come straight and go into the Geiger Miller counter and and uh, quite regularly. So this observation, okay, the the, the observation that it get, gets very erratic or, or random uh, erratic readings, erratic readings. It keeps changing. Seems to show that the air molecules, which uh, you can imagine must be moving around, are somehow disturbing the 
alpha particles coming out quite strongly quite strongly okay but that's hard to understand because it's a bit like imagining a piece of cake disturbing the the path of a bullet going through it right and it's a piece of cake pushing a bullet aside when when uh, it's there so in order to understand this better in the following year in the following year um, maybe 1909 uh, together with um, two other persons Hans Geiger Hans Geiger and Ernest Marston okay so as in uh, the, the same Geiger who, who invented the Geiger Miller counter so with these two persons uh, help um, Geiger and Marston carried out a more careful experiment to see what happens when alpha particle goes through a piece of solid okay so what they did was they took a piece of gold foil so this is gold foil now there's a reason why they use gold foil because gold um, far from being very expensive it has a special property unusual property that it can be made very very thin much thinner than a piece of paper and and that makes it easier for for you know uh, things like alpha particles to go through so let's say there is this radioactive source that gives out alpha particles okay alpha particles come here so that's the setup and and then there is a geiger um muller counter or geiger tube so this is our um radio or our radioactive detector which geiger and marston could, could move around okay so move that, move that around to detect the alpha particles now the alpha particles that go through the gold foil would be detected by the detector and it was found that um, as expected for because of the very very high speed and penetrating power um, maybe just <clears throat> just just to uh, get to know the alpha particle better now, now the alpha particle uh, I kept saying that it, had, it has a very high speed but exactly how high okay about 10 to the power of 7 meters per second okay, um, or about 5% of the speed of light Now remember that this can actually be measured with uh, in the earlier videos I've talked a few times about the method of measuring the speed of a charged particle using uh, the formula V equals to E over B okay, so I shan't go into that here but um, okay so anyway uh, we have this very high speed of particles particles going through here and you can measure it you can detect it with, with this Geiger Muller tube. So, and what did they find? Okay, like I said, as they found that as expected, most of the particles um, go straight. So when they move this counter down here uh, in a straight line, they found they detected a lot of particles so lots of clicking sound now as they move it away the clicking sound um, there's less clicking sound or less clicking okay so that's also ex as expected because you are now away from the direct path now we might start asking so why do you still hear some clicking sound when it's away and well that's the good question 
So maybe when I just move it away, uh, uh, some there would be some alpha particles that hit the, the plum pudding, the, the, the little pieces of cakes that are the atoms and and uh, and although they they are very soft and like a piece of cake, maybe they, they still give some resistance to the alpha particles and, and push them aside a little bit. So that's understandable. Right for for um when when the detector just move off uh, by a small angle. Now, but what was very surprising was that as the detector was moved further uh, uh, further and further away uh, to bigger and bigger angles, they continue to detect alpha particles. Now, so that 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 was hard to understand. But what was not only hard to understand, what was what was unbelievable, what was unbelievable was that when when they moved this detector all the way to here, when they moved the detector all the way until they're on the other side of the gold foil. They still detected some alpha particles. And why, why was that unbelievable? Because this means that some of the alpha particles, some of these bullets, hit the little pieces of cakes of the atoms and bounce right back. You remember that time that people thought of the atoms as little pieces of cakes? And they thought of the alpha particles particles as bullets. So what happens when a bullet hits a piece of cake and bounces right back at you? You wouldn't believe it, of course, because you would think that the cakes are so soft. Okay, how can it bounce? How can it reflect a piece of bullet? So that was very hard to understand. And um, in Rutherford's own word, in Rutherford's own word, I thought that it's like you have a, a 15 inch shell right, shooting at a piece of tissue and then the shell bounces right back. Now, a 15 inch shell is basically a, a big, a big gun. At that time, okay. So, um, more or less like, uh, you know, how it's hard to believe if you shoot a bullet at a piece of cake. Now, so the 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 explanation, the ob one obvious explanation, is that there must be something very hard inside this piece of cake or inside the atom. Okay. Now at that time, people people know that alpha particles are positively charged. So, and they know that the electrons are uh, in the atoms are very light. So it's very hard for for the um, if, if we think of the plum pudding model. Okay. People know that the electrons will be very light. Thomson has done his measurement and analysis. So the 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 um, model which Rutherford came up with after this observation was that the was more or less Nagaoka's model. Uh, maybe not in all the details. Right? Mainly that the atom should have Rutherford uses this model in which the um, all the positive charges and, and all the mass and positive charges of the atom or almost all are concentrated inside the center of the atom. So all the masses together with the positive charges are concentrated at the center um, of the atom and 
Okay, maybe not all the mass, but there's the sum of the mass in the elect are in the electrons, and these electrons are going round and around the atom. Okay, but the masses of the electrons are very very small compared to the mass of the the nucleus. Okay, so Rutherford then um, he made this model and he carried out uh, some calculations to predict the kind of angles that an alpha particle and an alpha particle when coming close to the nucleus would bounce back because of the, 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 the repulsion forces between the alpha particle and the nucleus. So by doing his calculations, he could estimate he could estimate the, the probability that the alpha particles would reflect, would bounce back um, at different angles. And he found that his calculations agreed well with Geiger and Marston's experiment. Okay. So they were Rutherford was able to conclude that Thomson's plum pudding model was wrong because this experiment shows conclusively that most of the mass of an atom must uh, and all the all of the positive charges must be at the center of the atom. So this thing at the center is now called a nucleus. It's called a nucleus of the atom and it contains um, it contains all of the positive charges and most of the masses. Okay. And um, And that explains why the very high speed alpha particles is a why some of them can bounce right back. Now, but most of them still go through. Most of them still go through simply because um, if the alpha particles happen to, in fact, most of them would, would be just going through the empty space. Uh, between atoms, because inside an atom is mostly empty space in, in this picture. Only when an alpha particle near, is almost directly coming towards the nucleus, only when that happens, then the alpha particle would get uh, repelled and then bounce right back at, 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 at a big angle. Okay, If the alpha particle does, does not come too close to the to the nucleus, it, it will still experience some repulsion, and it might bend a little bit, but it would mostly go uh, quite straight. All right, it, most of them will go quite straight. Some of them bends a little bit. Okay, so but there's always a chance. Maybe a, a small number of them happen to come almost directly towards the, the nucleus, which has a very small volume, and those it, it is those that would be would actually bounce right back. 